trapping is an American pastime, one of America's oldest traditions that helped drive Western expansion, an immutable characteristic of outdoorsmen across the nation, and one of the most effective methods of wildlife conservation on the planet. This video contains graphic images and may not be suitable for some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Dominion Predator Controls Down the Line. Today we're going to have some all around predator action with some coyotes and some bobcats too. Let's get to it. Well, folks, I had a set here that picked up a coyote about four days back and it picked up another one today this will be the 18th dog of the season out of uh, 23 check days 24 check days and uh, this is the first dog with mange that we've got the whole year so far uh, looks like a female uh, maybe a male I can't really tell with the mange all eating it up like the way it is right now. I think it's an old female. And uh, I caught this dog on a double dirt hole here that had already caught an animal before and it smelled like a coyote. And I had some, uh, I said on my Instagram video that it was my own bait, but it was actually some uh, range boss. Some of uh, Andy Weiser's range boss that was in this hole. And, uh, this, uh, I don't know how well you can see this dog. I'll move around and get it to move a little bit. You can see, uh, see the mange is real bad. All of the legs, all the way up to the neck and face, all the way on the underbelly, undercarriage. Um, this is one of the reasons why we trap. We don't just trap to protect these cows and their calves and you know people's pets and stuff like that we also trap for fur we trap for tradition but we trap for conservation you got a lot of uh, a lot of animals get overpopulated real easy and um, when they get overpopulated they get different types of diseases including mange that gives them a really bad quality of life and we're, we're lucky to be able to take this dog out now before it gets real cold January, February this coming year because uh, this dog probably would have froze to death. And um, there's going to be a lot of other animals that can get mange from this dog and it's going to cause problems with other dogs because of how big the population is. So it's important for trappers and conservationists across the nation to work hard at trying to keep healthy populations of fur-bearing animals and other types of animals too, game animals and such. But uh this animal's got really bad mange so we're gonna go ahead and get it taken care of this is uh dog number 18 so if you could probably say that you know one out of 18 dogs is gonna have mange around here and i'll bet i could kill 100 or 200 around here and it wouldn't make a difference um kind of a slow start to the season even though i've got 48 traps out right now i'm, I'm not on a whole lot of property with those 48 traps and that's why it's kind of a slow start if i spaced those traps out over three or four or five miles i'd probably pick up a lot more animals uh, but we're buggy trapping and we're trying not to use the truck as much as we can so we can just uh, get in the buggy and go And that kind of keeps us locked down a little close but um, Coyote number 18 on a dirt hole. This is probably the fourth or fifth coyote I've caught on a dirt hole everything else has either been a glandler or a flat set of some sort with urine at it and um, 
we're gonna get this dog taken care of, get the set remade, and uh, move on down the line. Well, folks, looks like we got uh, another coyote here. This is coyote number 20 on check day 25. We caught six cats up to this point, just a few coons. Maybe four coons total and 20 coyotes. I've missed a few coyotes too. Like yesterday, I um, went and freshened up a lot of sets after the rain. We're gonna get another big rain overnight tonight and it's gonna last most of the day tomorrow. It's gonna wash everything out. But I try to set the sets up where they'll still work even when they're wet and it rained all morning yesterday and the night before and it's, it's uh, doing pretty good now. The sets all still work, but I, uh, Use peat moss and then bed with antifreeze just in case it freezes. But I came through yesterday and about 70% of my sets in the morning when I had time, I went and put urine or some of Derek's one leg up or some of Bruce Watt's uh, one shot, pro shot. I've got a handful of different, I've probably got five or six different types of urines I use. So I just came through on this post set that I'd remade a, a little under a week ago when we had a catch in the same set and I just added a little bit of urine and then boom, next morning, this dog's down. Pretty good looking dog. Um, old dog, you can see in the face, it's probably not looking at the camera much, but you can see in the face how old that dog looks. So it's a, I think it's a 550 I got set in here. So I'm gonna get this dog out of this 550 and get on down the line. But catch number 20 on check day 25. And I'm probably only trapping about 2,000 acres at this point. Maybe even only 15, 1,800. I got 6,500 on this ranch that I'm up to trap, but a third of it's locked down by hunters and a third of it's locked down by cattle. And I haven't set necessarily everywhere, but I've only got 48 traps out. I expect to have two or three catches a day most days, but that hadn't happened. So hopefully that'll change before I start pulling coyote sets and putting in for cats. But either way, it makes for good TV. Uh, this old dog's going to take a ride in the truck. We're going to see if it's skinnable or not. And we'll see y'all down the line. Well, folks. Got us another calf killer. It's a pretty big dog. I've had a handful of catches over here in this other trap next to it. It looks like something was in here digging around, probably this dog. And I didn't catch him there, but this, uh, this set had some uh, tainted love in it and high lonesome some urine and I was using this bone as a post. Looks like he chewed on it pretty good. Um, this would be uh, dog number 26, no, dog number 21 on check day 26 off this ranch. And uh, that's a Duke 650 right there. It's got that dog held pretty tight. Good full paw catch. And it's a pretty big pup. Definitely good to take out of the pool. So we're gonna keep on trucking and see what else we got going on. Well folks, here we are on check day 29. It's the uh, 16th, 16th of December. I usually try to wait till Christmas to get uh to start keeping cats but based off of uh the fur on the belly of this one it looks like it looks like it's gonna be a cat worth keeping um 
This cat, I don't know if you can see it, hopefully you can. This cat's caught by two front foot. He's got both front feet in the trap. So double foot catch on this cat on the 29th check day. This will be the seventh cat I've caught. I've let go five of them. I harvested one and uh, I'm gonna harvest this one too. I got a good look at the belly fur and the length of the belly fur and the fur's priming up real nice. It'll be better in January, but it's definitely worth having now. So I think, uh, I think it'll work out. And uh, hopefully the wind's not causing too many problems with uh, the audio. I tried to pull the buggy up so it was kind of breaking the wind, but it's a really good spot. We got a two track here that runs through this 80 and there's two more 80s out this way and two more big 80s out this way. Actually, they're both 160s, two 160s out this way. And then across the way, there's another 160 and 80 attached to it and they've got cows on them or hunters on them. So I haven't been on those, but I've been trapping this 180 real or this 80 uh, real heavy. I got about 10 traps in here now and I've been reworking sets after the rain and we had a day yesterday where we didn't catch anything at all, didn't even have the set flipped off. So I just spent time reworking them. And uh, this will be the third cat I've caught in this past year. Uh, I released the other two. The first cat I caught this season was actually just up to two track. But this is a real good spot. Um, there's a fence row here and another guy hunts over here and owns this property here and he's got a 160 that he hunts on. And um, there's tons of critters on this fence line. I see deer, sometimes 16, 18 deer at a time jumping these fences running through his field and running back through these other pastures and I've seen coyotes I'm just a week ago a week and a half ago I was sitting right here fixing a remake with a coon and um, I was sitting here and at the top of this hill behind me there was a coyote just sitting up there just looking around I had no idea I was there and I ended up strolling up there to check my other sets and he didn't mess with my sets so I got a couple sets up there that are kind of getting old on me and I'm gonna pull them out and I'm gonna reset them before I pull out of this pasture today but this is cat number seven the second one i've harvested i'm looking for 18 more after this i'm gonna spend the next two and a half months getting 18 more cats and um a double front foot and a duke 650 offset and this was a step down dirt hole so i'll go ahead and get this cat out of here and then i'll show you how i remake the set i'm going to turn it into a trench set now that's been dug out pretty good but i'm not really going to mess with anything around it so it's still got all this cat smell he was pissing all over the place when i pulled up so it's a good set it's going to be a great set it'll probably catch more cats it'll definitely pull in coyotes and if i can just keep those possums from plugging up my sets we should be good so i'll get this cat taken care of and i'll show you the remake and we'll start moving on down the line <coughs> All right, folks, that might not be the best shot, but it is what it is. Um, we had this big cat in here. I said it was a tomcat. I thought it was because how big it was, but it's actually queen, 26 plus pound queen. Good looking queen too, the belly. You can see it's pretty nice all the way through. Nice wide belly. It's usually the queens that have the real nice bellies around here. Some of the best cats I've ever sold from Oklahoma were uh, small queens that had really beautiful clear white bellies with good big spots so that's a good cat that's gonna that's gonna make some money and uh we had this duke 650 in here and that cat was double front foot caught because i had a step down dirt hole and the way cats a lot of times when they get curious and stuff they'll pounce on stuff with both feet and uh, sometimes they jump in all feet i've never caught a cat with more than one foot but usually i use a smaller trap when i'm trapping cats anyway this was set for coyotes and uh, whenever I start cat trapping solely, I'm just gonna use uh, 550s or something about that size. I got a handful of Bridger number three dog lists that I use too whenever I'm trapping cats uh, for walkthrough sets and so forth. But this was a step down dirt hole. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it into a trench set and I'm gonna dig out all this right here. I'm gonna get back into my hole that was right there. I'm gonna drill that back out and then I'm gonna make it to where it's a trench where whatever animal comes in here is gonna have to get down in that trench in order to get to that food. And when that happens, they're gonna have a pan sitting right there, a pretty nice size big pan on those Duke 650s that they're gonna step on. Heck, we might even get another double front foot catch. So. All right, here you're gonna see me use a shovel to pull out 
everything in between where that old trap bed was and the hole and I make this hole deeper and get down in there a little further and I put some backing in there and then I make sure to waller out the uh, trap bed so the trap bed set up in such a way where the the trap setting down about another two inches from where it was originally and then I just basically bang the chain in like normal I go ahead and make sure the jaws are gonna sit and everything's level I end up bringing in some dirt around the uh, north side of the pan, the trap there to be able to keep that from rocking whenever a coyote steps on that end of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and bed it like normal, make sure everything's good and solid, everything's tight, put in my peat moss and my trap pan cover. And then I'm going to come in with some antifreeze. We're going to top it just like we do, antifreeze, local dirt, then some more antifreeze, blend it in. And then once it's all said and done, it's ready to go. All right, folks, today I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the death ray that I use all the time. It's uh, Lee Steinmeier made this originally. So I call this Lee Steinmeier death ray oftentimes in the show. And I, it's a quick dispatch tool that's uh, silent. So you could uh, dispatch an animal in inner city if you needed to in a place where you couldn't shoot a 22, or just to keep the blood off the pelt and to keep the bullet holes through the through the head. Um, this will take care of it in a quick and orderly fashion. I've used it on a lot of different animals. It works for coyotes. I've used it on, you know, possums and coons and even a badger in the past. And uh, it worked good on cats. Uh, you can you can dispatch a cat with any kind of uh, catch pole. But uh, when it comes to a coyote, you need something that's really strong that's actually going to take them down. And um, this device works somewhat like a snare, but it works pretty much instantly if you use it properly. That way there's uh, no issues when it comes to the blood in the set or holes in the pelts. So this is something that I really enjoy. I've had it ever since the first season I started trapping, and I think I might retire it. I just found out earlier this, uh, right towards the end of this season, that Lee had actually sold this business <clears throat> to um, uh, Kendall Obermeyer, who runs um, No BS Lures. And uh, Kendall makes some really good traps, and I'll probably uh, show you some of those in the in the future. Um, I use some of Kendall's beaver traps, and it's the best beaver trap I've ever seen. I've had three or four different types of beaver traps. I've used the Montanas. I've seen a lot of the uh, 850s and some of the other sets that are out there. And then of course, everybody's seen some of the really common beaver traps that are out right now. But when it comes to um, using a drowning rod to get a beaver down, Kindle traps really do the job. And because Kindle makes such good equipment and has such good traps out there, and he's got a lot of equipment that he buys, every pretty much every chain stake that I use in the super stakes, they're all Kindle's chain stakes. <clears throat> but um, he's got such good, you know, capability to make some really incredible, incredible stuff that um, he's now started taking over the making of the death rays. He bought that business from Lee, and um, I'm gonna try out one of Kendall's death rays as soon as I get the chance, and I'll probably just hang this one up on the wall so I don't lose it. You know, Lee's got some original uh, artwork that's here on it, and I don't know if you can see it too good, but that's a coon right there, and it says death ray. The construction that's on it really good. It's got one of those really hefty hefty duty um, caulking gun handles on it and everything's made out of stainless steel so it's not going to rust on you there are some plastic parts that can easily be replaceable and then you've got a nut that's here in the end that he machines down and you, you use it to keep this cable in place on that rod that's inside of it so whenever you have an animal in the trap you're going to hold the lock down and then you're just going to pull this up against their neck as tight as you can and then once you got it you're going to crank it down and you'll crank it down to a point where they asphyxiate, the blood stops going to the brain, and they die right there on the spot. Keeps you from having to worry about, um, you know, catching catching an animal, being forced to have uh, blood in in the in the set or any kind of holes in the pelt. And um, you know, this this thing right here is one of the best devices I ever put, you know, a couple hundred bucks into. And I don't think it cost me that much. I think at the time I paid 125, 135 for it, and it's been worth every penny of it a hundred times over at this point. There are guys out there that use these, um, and they, you have multiple of them, and they get so many catches. You know, those guys in West Kansas and some of the places around the country where they have a whole lot of dogs, have a whole lot of sets down. When you're gang setting for dogs, you don't want to have one of these to kill each dog one at a time. You have three or four of these, so you can take them all out real quick, get all your sets remade, and get in and out of there real quick. So this kind of device works real good. It keeps you from having to pull the trigger, even though that sometimes that's necessary. And um, I wouldn't recommend using one of these on a skunk. But uh, other than that, this thing is going to take care of any of your fur bearers. And like I said, if you're doing any kind of ADC work or you're doing something inner city limits where you can't shoot a gun, this will help you take care of it. Lee Starmeyer's Death Ray. One hell of a piece of equipment. Well, folks. 
We got a really, really, really big tomcat this morning. It's uh, the 17th of December, and this is check day number 30. I've been trapping coyotes since before December 1st, and I caught a handful of cats that I let go before December 1st. Caught a couple of cats I let go after December 1st. Usually don't keep the cats until Christmas, but this is a good cat. It's a really big tom. And uh, I had this cat. He's got he's fully pawed, paw caught, whole pad catch in a uh, Duke 650. Yesterday I caught a really good cat that was double front footed in a Duke 650. And this is the 28th day that this set's been in the ground. I had no action on these sets for almost the entire time. Maybe a little scratching, but that's it. And I have a set here and I have a set there behind the camera. And you can see this pond dam that's right here. This pond doesn't have any water in it except for the few drops it got in the last couple of rains, but it was totally dried up for the last few months. There's another pond over there about 250, 300 yards that's um, got a little bit of water in it, but it's down a lot. It looks like it's down four, six, eight foot. It's, it's way down. And um, the cats move through here. The coyotes move through here a lot. I've got a dead pile just off over here about 150 yards. And I'm eventually going to snare it for dogs whenever I get into January and February and, and pull my dirt traps for dogs and start nuisance work. But right now I'm fur trapping and um, I'm going for cats now pretty hard. I'm still going for dogs, but not nearly as much as I was. I got 46 traps in the ground and this is my first trap check of the day. Um, this is real close to the house. And um, this cat is a big tom i have no idea how big it is yet i'll bet if he hasn't crapped yet he's well he did he crapped right there thank god i at least got that but he um he's probably every bit of 30 28 to 32 pounds and uh good looking cat the um the set i had was a flat set with a cow patty on the backing and i had a little bit of andy weiser's tainted love in it and some of wayne derrick's uh lure sorry, some of wayne derrick's urine sorry and yesterday when I came in, because it had been so cold the last few days, and I knew we got a lot of cold nights coming, next week it's going to be in the teens and in the, in, in the single digits with wind chills and the negatives. And I started uh, slapping around a little bit of uh, skunk lure. And there's a lure that Andy Weiser used to sell that was called um, Super Cat. And it's a lion and bobcat call lure that's got really fat chunks of uh, glands in it with uh, really pasty yellow sauce in it because it's got a lot of skunk it's real strong and i just used a little bit of it i think i put a little bit of it on the tree and i put a little bit of it right underneath that um cow patty and sure as sure enough this cat was here first thing the next morning so i'm gonna get this cat taken care of and i'll show you the remake and then we'll get moving on down the line it looks like um it's gonna be an eventful day i prayed about it pretty good and we had this cat waiting on us so um never underestimate the power of prayer but don't ever underestimate the power of good lure either um good lure or the right set in the right location is going to catch the animals no matter what god just helps you fill those traps so uh, we'll get this cat taken care of and i'll get back at you well folks here's the remake this is about all that was there in the first place i had this uh trap bed here my trap pan's right about here and I got that trap in there offset a little bit and there's a hole in there that had my lure on it and a stick and it's still there. The cat never got to it. So I left that there. I found what pieces of patty I could find and brought it back in. And since I'd had a little super cat yesterday and that's what caught this cat, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more on this thing. And I'm gonna add some bobcat urine instead of coyote urine that I've been using. Even though there's urine and feces all over the place this whole place smells like a cat but that andy weiser super cat i'm lucky to still have a jar of this he doesn't sell lure anymore but you might be able to find some of his lure in some places but you're not going to find this one and you're sure as heck not going to find tainted love but uh this is a real skunky lure it doesn't take a whole lot of skunky lure to get something done in fact it's very 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 minimal just a little bit goes a long way and that's what was on here was just a little bit and I just pasted a small portion of this, something as tiny as that. And I put a little bit of it on top and rubbed it in. 
and I threw the rest of it underneath it down in the hole and you set that kind of there on top of it I brought in a uh, cat turd from previous catch I catch I keep all my cat turds it's important that you uh, find some kind of device or some way to store your cat turds um, they like to mold whenever they get kind of warm same thing with uh, coyote turds so uh, hang on to them and if you need to stick them in a freezer but don't put them in something plastic like this in the freezer because this thing will break I'm teaching from experience I got a coyote here and a possum what we call a poor man's double I had that with a cat just recently I've had two doubles with possums and cats since I started trapping this ranch and uh, coyote Pretty light colored, would have been real good to catch. Uh, would have been real good to catch about two weeks ago. But if you can see the fur in his uh, shoulders is totally rubbed out and gone. And the back piece is what they want. And it's got like a little divot on both sides. And they're already starting to chase tail, it looks like. And because of that, the, uh, the shoulders are no good. And uh, this is coyote number 22, check day 32. I caught two cats, but the last coyote I caught was in this same trap. And um, I'm glad to catch a bunch of dirt coyotes. I'm going to start, you know, doing nuisance work and snaring for them soon. But uh, that's not going to happen until after January 15th, once most of the rest of the pastures open up after the hunters move out. So I've got this possum over here in a set that I caught a cat in previously. And... Uh, this coyote here and a set I caught a coyote in just about five days back all right folks this is that catch I just had you can see the uh, remakes I've got a uh, bone post in there with a hole in there that's got a little bit of glandular in it and a turd covering it up with some urine all over it and then my traps just right in that area Kind of offset just a little bit and about 9, 10 inches back. And then the possum remake, I kind of change it up a little bit. There's a hole here. The original hole that I had here in this tuft of grass, this was set up for a north wind. But the wind's been blowing hard from the south the last few nights. So I took all the grass from this set, made it kind of a trash pile set. I put a little bit of coyote glandler in here, some G-Man coyote with some coyote urine. But then back over here, I've got the turd and some uh, cat glandler in there. I believe it's Super Cat. That's Derek's Super Cat and Derek's G-Man Coyote and Derek's urine. But I'm using Liesl Ruswat's uh, cat urine. That's about the best cat urine I can find, and that's all I use, really. Well, folks, this is uh, check day 33. And this is dog number 23. This is the third dog I caught in this set. I had uh, 52 sets out overnight. I had cattle moved over about six of them, so half of those six were flipped off. And six of them are gonna stay flipped off until those cattle move again. The ranch is working cattle right now, and uh, they're gonna pull what they've got out here in some of these pastures, and they're gonna move them up to headquarters, and work them and then they're going to put them back in other pastures and let them let them sit for a while but we've got this dog here this is dog number 23 on check day 33 i kind of expected to catch a lot more dogs than this but i'm kind of regulated to about 20 percent of the ranch right now so i think i've caught most of the easy ones and a couple of the hard ones this was a dirt hole set just regular dirt hole had uh cooking oil in it i showed you this set before and uh, this set's produced for me pretty good. There's a lot of dogs that move through here and the wind was just lightly out of the north in the morning. It's almost still at some points. And uh, this set was kind of set up for a north wind. Um, so I've got another set real close. Usually whenever I catch a dog in this set, there's um, the other set's been tampered with, but that one looks fine. I always set in pairs. Sometimes I set four sets in a place, a real good crossover, a real good gate or something that's got a lot of action on it a lot of sign i'll set four traps but generally i just set two in every little location i go to and i got about 24 locations right now 20 26 locations 
So the, the cows are uh, out there making a bunch of noise. They're all getting moved around a bit and getting fed. But uh, these coyotes are why we're in here to help those cows out. And um, I've only caught one with mange out of 23. And uh, this uh, pretty fresh cooking oil that I had in here that just had a little bit of turkey in it from Thanksgiving is what uh, brought this dog in and the other two dogs previously. So a little high lonesome, a little cooking oil gets these dogs digging and they get caught. You can see that's a really good full front pad catch on that MB550. I haven't tried the Duke 550s yet, but I'm gonna try a dozen or two next year. I like the 650s. I've been getting a handful of double front paw catches on the 650s. But I'm gonna get this set remade and get this dog dispatched and we're gonna keep on moving down the line. Well folks, this is Bobcat number nine. This uh, pretty good size Tom, good spots. I had a uh, post set here, right? I got a post set on both corners of this uh, this hay pin right here, and um, they're both they both got glandler. One of them's got my own glandler in it. And this one has Andy Weiser Tainted Love in it. And I think I might have added a little bit of Pecos to this about a week ago. Last time I put urine on it, I put Bobcat urine on it because there was a swipe in the. I saw claw marks whenever it happened, and it didn't look like a coyote. It looked like a cat came through here and swiped it one time and took off and just kind of uncovered, you know, the the pan cover just a little bit and knocked some of the grass down. So I came in here and um, added some Bobcat urine to it. And, Got a uh, got a real nice Tom Bobcat a few days later. But as you can see, it's a pretty good cat. I got fortunate enough to be able to trap this ranch and have as many cats so far as I have. I'm definitely gonna hit my numbers. This is the ninth cat I've caught, and this will be the fourth one that I've harvested. I've let go five. But you can see that fur's looking real good on the front end of that cat. And he's a pretty big tom. He's upset. He's ready to ready to go home and dry out. So <clears throat> we'll get this set remade. And we'll get back with you guys. And me and Ray have the Red Ranger will keep moving on down the line. <laughs> Well, folks, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll leave the links down in the description below. I'll see you next time on Down the Line, and until then, Dominion out.